The ancients spoke of it. It is the heart of this fierce land. It is carried in the wind. Born of our legends. And when we are put to the test, it is the one thing we must always be. So how did the idea for Brave all come about? our development process early on. I mean, Pixar is a filmmaker-driven studio, so our directors come up with the ideas. And uh, uh, many years ago, these movies take a long time to make, our fellow director, Brenda Chapman, she um, was inspired by her relationship with her own daughter, and, and that was a six-year-old, so feisty and, and opinionated, and so, what else should be like as a teenager? And, and what a great idea for a story. And our creative brain trust, led by John Laster, they just latched right on and said, yes, that's a great story set in a, a mythical and ancient Scottish highlands, and that developed um, over time into the brave that you see today. And was it always the idea to set it in Scotland? Yeah, yeah then we were, you know, that old adage, write what you know. I mean, both Brenda and I have Scottish descent. Um, I love history. I read up on the Middle Ages all the time, the Scottish legends and lores, all the way back to the Celts. Um, there's a lot to pull from out of those ideas and those legends and those myths that it's just a fertile ground for placing this dynamic of this parent child you know this coming of age story right in there shake it up and see what we get so absolutely scotland was a, a go-to place mm -hmm. and this is your first film as a director uh, first feature film sorry as a director was the process any different as opposed to the short films you've done or it, i mean short film is, is is way different than a feature um and i was i was i mean i've been doing feature films uh forever um up through the story department, being head of stories and stuff like this. So it was actually the short film that was totally different because I had to tell a whole complete thing in like three and a half minutes. This at 80 something minutes, now I'm like, oh, oh, it's back to mama's. You know, I know this format, I can do this. So, uh, you know, it, it does have, you're spinning a lot more plates with a feature film than you are with a short film, uh, totally. But a lot of the, the ideas and the process is exactly the same. And has the world of animation changed much since you got involved in it? And where do you see it going? Oh future? yeah, it can go anywhere. I mean, there's not, there's not, you know, it's imagination is what's driving yeah. it. You know, I mean, Pixar all started, you know, from technology, but then they hired John Lasseter, you know, and they've got, now they've got ideas and John would go, hey, can we, I've got this idea, can we do it? And they're all, I don't know. So you really have this function of art driving the technology or inspiring the technology and technology then back inspiring the art. So it's this fantastic creative circle that we have. And nowadays it just keeps getting better and better and better and better. There's nothing that we can't do. Yeah, yeah. inspired by endless ideas and you know, imagination is, is you know, endless, but, but the, the medium itself, particularly computer animation, um, it, it becomes faster and we are able to be a little bit more flexible and versatile. The Pixar technical artists, they'll, they'll never say no to you. If, if Mark says, let's have this wild haired, you know, untamed spirited heroine who looks like this, they may blink for a second and say, okay, you know, and then they go in and they start inventing the technology that it requires to get there. And then by the end of the film, by the time we're done, it actually becomes directable. You know, she, he can, Mark can actually move a lock of hair for an acting moment if he needs to. It becomes faster to render and, and um, everything improves over time. And so, you know, we get, uh, we, we get challenges that we could just barely meet a few years ago. We're able to master now. And then the next challenge ahead will be something we need to invent. And then it just keeps going like that. And did working in 3D change anything for you? Did it open up anything for you? No, I mean, 3D, I mean, I've done live action films, I've done animated films, storytelling, storytelling. I mean, there's definitely differences. You know, in live action, you get things for free. You know, you get the spontaneity and the trees and the way the wind blows them and stuff for free. In animation, I have to create all that stuff. We actually have to make the leaves and then we have to blow them in the grass and her hair and all that stuff. So I don't get stuff for free. So it's, it's movie making and slow motion, but the amount of control that you have in an animated film the ability to constantly check on where your film is as you're building this context and make those little tweaks to constantly improve it 
is a fantastic tool to have. And that's something that you don't have in live action. You get what you get. The sun is setting. Mm -hmm. That's it. Shots over. I come out. It's supposed to be a sunny day. It's a gray day. Mm -hmm. Now what? I guess the scene is now a gray scene. You know what I mean? So there are trade-offs in each, but the storytelling is exactly the same. And I found the story to be one of the darker Pixar films, yet also one of the funniest Pixar films. How did you balance the comedy and the, the drama, I guess? You just keep working yeah. it and working I mean, you know, trial and error, as Mark yeah. likes to call it, because we, we spend years making the film, and every three months, within those years, we put the whole movie together as a movie, whether it's in storyboard or layout or animation, whatever stage we are, and we look at it and we say, like, is this working? Does it make sense? Does it have the heart, the humor, and everything that we want it to have? Does it, does, is the intensity sufficient for the stakes to be really felt and we really feel like that there's real jeopardy for these characters based on their decisions? Every, de every decision is deliberate, but in terms of how much of one thing or another, one ingredient or another is appropriate, we have to just keep trying and working it and looking at it as, as our own audience, you know, as if we are the audience. What do we like what do we feel is right and, and test test that for ourselves because we are we are very harsh critic, critics of our own work yeah I mean we're the architects and the audience and we have to be able to wear both hats mm -hmm. you know design a house as an architect they're gonna want a certain way because of whatever design blah, 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 blah. but then they have to go in and live in the house mm -hmm. and if they can live in and go oh my gosh this totally doesn't work for me I would never put the door there those lessons you go back out and you rebuild the thing that's what we do all the time right and what do you hope audiences get out of the film? I hope they get a lot. I hope they get inspired. I hope they, you know, they have this experience as if they were a young teenage girl growing up in the Middle Ages, uh, or Fergus, or Queen Eleanor, and dealing with that human condition, you know, of the time and the journeys that they all go through, and they're inspired to be brave themselves. I hope audiences feel something, you know, whether they feel um, emotion or humor, but, but, or if they feel growth, they feel like they learn something. But um, I hope they're entertained and come on a, wide, a wild and entertaining ride with us and um, are transported to a place they've never been. And maybe they'll even visit Scotland after. <laughs>